Hi, good morning everyone. We are the team number five and we are going to present about the mangroves in Mexico. Uh, our team members are Renata Montañez Aroche, Sebastián Vázquez Leal, Ángel Cechil Villa Santana, Frida Alexandra García Coronado, and Camila, eh, Camila López Amaguer, and me, Alejandra Paola Zuniga Avila. I hope you enjoyed it and let's begin. Introduction. In this topic, we talk about the communities and ecosystem in Mexico, then the different information about the topic, like the geographical distribution that they have evolved to suffer in flow the coastal. The other topic is the biotic and abiotic factor that they the difference that they have. The food chain of the mangrove forest relies heavily on the recycling of the the choice. After that topic, we have the social imperfection of the human activities that he biggest street that the mangroves in Mexico and the main human activities are agriculture. agriculture. Then the last topic talk about the proposal for the protection of the ecosystem to curb the growing congestions, the pollution, and the many cities in Mexico. Geographical distribution. Mangroves are trees that have evolved to survive in flooded coastal environments. From the dwarf trees in the deserts of Baja California to 40 meter giants in the coastal forest of Chiapas, the coast of Mexico has more than 700,000 hectares of mangroves. 5% of the world total, making it the fourth country in the world in area of this kind of ecosystem after Indonesia, Brazil, and Australia. The government of the Republic has restored 5,414 hectares of wetlands since 2013 in several states of the country, Campeche, Nayarit, Oaxaca, Sinaloa, Tabasco, Veracruz, Colima, Guerrero, Quintana. Mexico is one of the countries with the most mangroves in the world, but also occupies one of the first places in mangrove deforestation rates. Hi, my name is Angel Villa and I'm going to explain to you what are the biotic and abiotic factors of the mangroves. So as we know, the abiotic factors are those factors that does not have life, are the ones that represent how living things are living in the environment, which in this case are the mangroves. And some of the abiotic factors in the mangroves are the climate, which mangroves only grow in a tropical and temperate coastlines and they do not grow in coastlines that the winters goes below 40 degrees. Also the soil, mangroves are able to grow in all sorts of soil and another one is the wave energy. Uh, the wave energy means that the waves, the energy that the waves create when hits a coast also the salinity, mangroves grow best when in saline rich water and mangroves exist in a saline environment and they depend on fresh water to maintain an optimum salinity balance. And the last one, the ocean currents, helps distribute mangrove propagus as the currents spread the seeds. It helps keep the swamp full of trees in many different areas. So that was the abiotic factors and talking more about the biotic, which are those factors that actually have life, which we can easily recognize such as animals. And in mangroves, we have the mangrove crab, the saltwater crocodile, the jaguar, the sea snake, and the snowy egret. These are the animals that are findable in Mexico's mangroves. Also, we have the white pelican and different kind of insects and different kind of spiders. And also talking about the biotic ones are the plants. We in, Here in the Ma Mexico's mangroves, we can find 
the black mangrove trees, buttonwood, red mangrove trees, mangrove leaves, and white mangrove, which are different kind of plants or trees that we can see in the Mexico's mangroves. And that's all. Hello, my name is Renata, and I'm going to explain you the food web chain. The food chain of a mangrove forest relies heavily on the recycling of the detritus made by the failing leaves of the trees. The top level of this food chain are the wedding, beer, the wedding beards, such as egrets or ospreys. They feed on the fish is a community who take shelter in the roots of the mangrove trees. Now I'm going to explain you the food web change like with the examples of the animals. First the lips, then the detritus, then the snapping shrimp, small fish, wedding beards, that is the egrets, oysters, crab, spiny lobster shrimp, wedding beards, Leaves drop from the mangrove trees and small benthic animals are the bottom of the food chain and passing through usually a few layers of nectar like fish or lobster ultimately make it make it to watering birds like grits. Thank you. Social implications of human activities in Mexico's mangroves. One of the biggest threats that mangroves in Mexico suffer from, and of course many other natural habitats, it is of course human activities. Some of the main human activities that take place in Mexico's mangroves are agriculture, tourism, and industrial development. But when these activities suffer from misplanification and are not carried out in an appropriate way, it can lead to the destruction of the habitat, excess of contamination, and the overholding of natural resources. Also, an extent reduction of the size of the mangroves, which is mainly result of the agriculture and the ranching. Mangroves offer a lot of useful products for society, like wood, food resources, resin, forage, and also medicinal products. And it also supports the fishing industry of the entire coastal area. But, of course, the recollection of these products have been really affected by the mangrove deterioration, which is a result of the recollection of these products which basically means that thanks to the excess recollection of all of these products, the mangroves had been deteriorating and there's not much resources left. Now on this image, we can saw and analyze the threats drivers of mangrove loss. There is a 35% between the 80s and the, and the 2000. There is a lot and it's four times higher than overall global forest loss. The, climate, the, the factors are the climate change, the cost of development, pollution, aquaculture, agriculture, and logging. To solve this huge problem, we have proposals for the protection of the ecosystem that are reduce or eliminate the use of household chemicals and pesticides that can hurt the environment, recycle as much waste as you can, and reduce the amount of waste you produce, reduce your carbon, carbon footprint, and choose foods that are locally grown sustainable. To curb growing congestion, pollution, and inequalities, many cities in Mexico, in Mexico have begun promoting no motorized transport modes through the construction of routes and infrastructure networks, the establishment of bike sharing systems, educational and cultural programs for citizen solicitation, among others. Here we have some more tips for protecting the environment. Help protect mangroves, please. Plant a, a mangrove tree and stop the destruction of our mangrove and the animals that inhabit them. By protecting trees, you are protecting your family, your food, your health, and your wealth. Finally, we concluded this presentation by making our conclusions, each of, of the members, and 
We understand and know more about the the mangrove ecosystem in Mexico and the person to carry out the environment. Thanks for your attention. See you later.